Welcome back to my channel on linguistics and language learning. In this video, I'm going to show you the analysis of a sentence using a, a three time gram. And we focus on relative clause transformation, or in short, we can say TRL. Now, before coming to the analysis of relative clause transformation by using a three time gram, uh, let's see, let's review. Okay, or let's um, talk about a relative clause in general. So, in forming relative clauses or in forming relative clause transformation, we must have two sentences. And these two sentences must have similar phrases. Okay, now, Let's see the first example. In these two sentences, you can find the similar phrases. What are they? The man in the first sentence and the man in the second sentence. Okay, so these two sentences have already met the requirements to be joined to construct a relative clause. So when we join these two sentences into one sentence, we will have, I like the man, the man works hard. And you see that I like the man, the man works hard. This sentence is not effective. Why I said so? Because there is a repetition of the man, or in other words, the man appears twice in this sentence. So, in order to make this sentence effective, we have to change the man. And the one I mark in red here should be changed into the other form. And the other form that is able to replace the man in this context is a relative pronoun. There is also the reason why this transformation is called relative clause transformation because we use a relative pronoun. And you know already that relative pronouns are who, whom, whose, that, and which. These are relative pronouns in English. Now, when we replace the man by using a relative pronoun, the right relative pronoun to be used in this sentence is who. Why? Because the man in the second sentence occupies the subject position. So the right or the best relative pronoun to be used in this context is who. So we have the result. I like the man who works hard. Now, we have already an effective sentence. The sentence has already been effective. And I like the man who works hard. And this is what we call as a transformation. Why is it transformation? Because we have transformed the form that exists in our mind, in our mental grammar, okay? in our deep structure. We have, I like the man, the man works hard. That is in our mind. And then, we change the form of the man because it is not effective with relative pronoun who. So the result here is the surface structure. And you know that the conversion from the uh, deep structure into surface structure is called transforming transformation because we use a relative pronoun here to form the surface structure. So we call this as a relative class transformation. So we have, I like the man who works hard. Now, let's analyze the second example. Once again, we have two sentences and in each of these uh, sentences, we have the same phrase. You see, we have the stranger in the, sec uh, in the first, sentence and we have the stranger in the second sentence. But if you observe 
the stranger in in the in the second example you can find a bit difference from what we have in the man in the first example. Why? Because the man here is the subject of the sentence. Okay. This one is the subject of the sentence. Meanwhile, the stranger is not a subject because the stranger here is followed by apostrophe plus s indicating possession. So the stranger in the second example, the strangers here is called a noun or a possessive noun. Now, when we combine these two sentences in our mind or in our mental grammar, we have here the stranger, the stranger's back is green, looks exhausted. And once again, this is not effective because there is a repetition of stranger okay, in, one, in one sentence. Now, we can use here a relative pronoun in order to make this sentence effective. And because the strangers here uh, functions as the possessive noun, we use relative pronoun whose to make this sentence effective. And the result is the stranger whose bag is green looks exhausted. And you can see that the stranger whose back is green looks exhausted is the result of transformation or relative clause transformation. Now, okay, we are going to analyze these two examples or these two relative clauses by using a tree diagram. Now let's focus on uh, first on the first example. I like the man who works hard. Okay? I like the man who works hard. As usual, we have here a sentence which is composed of and P and Phoebe, noun phrase and verb phrase. And then we have here I indicating that the NP is composed of personal pronoun. Okay, we have personal pronoun here. And then the rest of the sentence belongs to Phoebe, okay? So Phoebe is composed of like as a verb, and then we have here yeah, the man who works hard as the end. Now, let's further analyze the elements of the NP. The NP here is composed of determiner, okay? And then noun, and then RP. Why RP? Because this is the, okay, great. This is the relative clause. Now, maybe you ask me a question. Why uh, we don't use here RC? Because relative clause. Okay, we use relative phrase instead of relative clause in order to show that the RP here has the same function as a phrase. Why? Because it is the element of the noun phrase or NP. And you know that a phrase can be composed of another phrase. So we cannot use here relative clause. Instead, we use relative phrase, RP. Okay, before we focus on the RP, and then let's see the element of determiner that is there. So we have here article. So we have here already analyzed the NP, uh, which is composed of personal pronoun, VP composed of verb and NP. And we already specified determiner into the article. So we have here, I like the man. And the rest will be the relative clause or RP. You see here, when we analyze the RP, the RP is composed of the other verb phrase. It means that the RP here is composed of a sentence. And as usual, a sentence is composed of, okay, great, NP and Phoebe, noun phrase and verb phrase. Now, the focus of the transformation here is on the noun phrase or on the 
and B. Now, let's analyze the and B. And B is composed of determiner plus noun. Okay, determiner plus noun. And the determiner is the article. And the and B in this deep structure is composed of the man. Here you are. Okay, as I show you before, that we have ineffective sentence because we have the same phrase in one sentence. I like the man, the man. But this is what happened actually in our brain, in our mental structure, okay? Now, the VP here works hard, is composed of verb plus adverb. So we label verb and adverb to become work hard. We already analyze the deep structure of relative clause. I like the man, the man works hard. Now, um, we are going to transform, okay? We have to transform the, the RP here, okay? The RP here into the transformational clause or using a relative clause transformation. Now, uh, as I told you, this is what we call as the relative transformation or TRL. Now, this is the deep structure, and now we move to surface structure. Okay, now, uh, as usual, we have sentence which is composed of NP and VP, and as you can see here, that NP is composed of the uh, personal pronoun, and then the VP is composed of verb and NP. We still have the same form in the deep structure and also in the surface structure. And then uh, we have here the element of personal pronoun, which is similar with the element of the uh, NP and, v and verb okay, in the first or in the deep structure, I like. And here you are. Verb plus NP, okay, and now we have here the NP is composed of determinant noun plus RP. Once again, we still have the same form, okay, and determiner is composed of the article and article plus noun here, okay, article and noun are composed of the and man, okay, now. We, once again, focus on the RP, okay? RP is composed of a sentence, okay? And then, sentence is composed of NP and VP. Okay, here you are. This is what makes the deep structure different from the surface structure in this point, okay? In the elements that constitute the NP. Here, NP is composed of determiner plus noun, but in the result of transformation or in the surface structure, we replace the determiner plus noun with relative pronoun, okay? We replace this by using relative pronoun, and the relative pronoun use is who? So, pro R here, okay, pro R, indicates relative pronoun. Okay, I think the rest will be similar. Okay, VP is composed of verb adverb and they are composed of works hard. Okay, you see, this is what we call as the analysis of adjective clause or relative clause transformation by using a tree diagram. Now, Let's come to the second uh, second example or the second sentence by using a, 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 a relative clause. Okay. Now, before coming to that focus, okay, before coming to the other example, I just want to emphasize, okay, I just want to emphasize the process of transformation. This is the key process of transformation. Okay, so you see here that the key process is how, how we replace determiner plus noun into relative pronoun who. 
And why is it needed? Or why uh, does it need to be uh, to be transformed? Because the form here, you can see that the man is the repetition of the man in the same sentence, and that the sentence is not effective. Therefore, we transform it into a relative pronoun. Okay, so here you are. This is actually the key point. Okay, the key point of transformation, or a uh, relative clause transformation. Now let's come to the second example. The stranger whose back is green looks exhausted. Okay, now as usual, when you begin the analysis of a sentence by using a three diagram, we must have as, and the as is composed of, and P and Phoebe. This is usual, okay? And you know it already. Now, um, Let's find out the animal of the NP. Of course, you know, NP is composed of determiner plus noun, the and stranger. So we have here the stranger. And then we have here the other element. Okay, we, the other element of the NP that is RP. And this will be the focus of our discussion. Okay, so. Determiner plus noun, of course, you know, determiner is composed of, okay, great article, because we have here the, okay? And then we have here stranger as a noun. Okay, and this is, uh, once again, this is not difficult for you because this is similar with the other analysis by using a tree diagram. Now, okay, uh, we will focus on this, okay? Therefore, we have to analyze Phoebe first, and then we are going to talk more or to talk uh, much about the RP later. Now, the Phoebe is composed of VL or linking verb plus adjective. Here you are, looks exhausted, okay? So we have here looks and we have here exhausted as the adjective. Okay, linking verb can be followed by adjective. Now, we analyze further, okay, are the constituents of the RP, okay? As uh, I've shown you before, that the RP is composed of a sentence, and the sentence is composed of the NP and VP. Now, let's see the elements of the NP. And P is composed of determiner and noun. Okay, as uh, you you have seen in the in the examples that the stranger whose bag is green looks exhausted actually is the result of transformation, and you know the deep structure of this sentence actually is the stranger the stranger's okay the stranger's bag not whose whose is the result of transformation. So we have here. And P plus pause. Okay, pause here. Okay, and P plus pause is uh, one of the forms of determiner because there are five kinds of determiner, and one of which is and P pause. And pause here is possession marked by apostrophe S. Okay, now let's continue. So the and P here is composed of determiner plus noun the stranger, and the, of course, you know, the article, okay? So we have here the stranger, and then plus apostrophe S, strangers. So the stranger, the stranger's back. Now, uh, the other element that we need to analyze is the Phoebe. Phoebe is green, so is, you know, is, is to be and to be belongs to linking verb. So, so, sorry. So we have here linking verb plus adjective. And VL is S and the adjective is green. So we already analyzed the deep structure of this sentence. Now, we are going to work on the transformational rule. And this rule is called um, relative clause transformation or TRL. Okay, 
Um, even though this transformation, we, we still need to begin our sentence by by uh, dividing sentence into okay into NP and VP. Okay, and then the NP is composed of determinant noun RP, and the VP is composed of linking verb and adjective. Okay, I just show you this immediately, not one by one. Why? Because we have analyzed this form in the deep structure. Okay, now, uh, actually here, this is, okay, the, the relative clause, which is the focus of our uh, discussion in this video. Okay, so we have here the stranger and then looks exhausted. Now, we analyze the element of a sentence, so the sentence is composed of NP and VP, a similar witness, NP and VP. And then the NP is composed of, okay, relative pronoun, pro, R plus noun. Where does relative pronoun come from? This relative pronoun comes from the NP pos, okay? This NP pos, that is determinant plus noun per pos. So we don't have uh, 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 apostrophe S anymore, okay? Because the relative pronoun here is used to replace the NP pos or determinant noun pos. So it is much simpler, okay? It is much simpler, but you need to know, okay, how we can use who's, okay, to replace the strangers in the deep structure. So it's simpler, okay? Instead of saying the strangers back, yeah, we just say who's back. Of course, you know, the VP is similar, is green. Okay, we have already analyzed the sentence, the stranger whose bag is green looks exhausted by using a tree diagram. And uh, once again, I have to emphasize that if you want to analyze uh, any transformational rule or any sentences experiencing transformation, you need to begin your analysis by providing the deep structure of the sentence, okay? You cannot analyze immediately to the uh, 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 surface structure of the sentence. We have to begin from its deep structure. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you can understand how to analyze the relative clause transformation by using a tree type. See you in the next video.